Hello, my friends. We are ready to talk about mutations, okay? Mutations are just a change in your DNA, okay? Now, I put little silly fish pictures on there, but mutations are usually random. Well, they are random and usually harmless, okay? Usually, they a change in a letter here or there won't do a thing, okay? So, as an example of this, um, we have all the cells in your entire body that have a nucleus have all of your DNA. That means your uh, skin cells can create stomach acid if they wanted to. Your, um, you know, there's just, they just have everything that the, my skin cells could create my brown eye color, but they don't because those genes are not active in skin cells, okay? So what if the stomach acid gene had a mutation in a cell that was on your skin? So let's say, um, so lots of things can cause mutations, first of all. There could be a mistake in the base pairing by DNA polymerase, so that could just be while new cells are being made. Uh, there are several environmental factors that could cause mutations, radiation, um, sunshine, um, sunburns, things like that, okay? So lots of things can affect our DNA. And sometimes they just happen naturally. So imagine that you have... Uh, so you have lots and lots of skin cells. Since skin cells, skin cells are our largest organ, okay? So let's say we're out in the sunshine, didn't put on our sunscreen, and we got a mutation. So the, the sun's rays made a problem in the DNA for the stomach acid gene, okay? So now we have to really think, is this an issue? So is the stomach acid gene being used in the skin cell? No, skin cells have no need for stomach acid, right? Only our stomach cells need stomach acid. So if the stomach acid gene had a mutation, would it matter? Not really, okay? So that's why they are usually harmless because it only has to be in a specific area with a gene that is being used, okay? Now, we have a couple types of mutations. We have point mutations. <clears throat> These are mutations like single base pair in your DNA, okay? So this is maybe DNA polymerase has made a mistake and it didn't get fixed, something like that, okay? So our DNA says we're supposed to be a TTC, okay? mRNA is AAG, and that gives us a lysine. So I don't know if you guys have picked up on this yet, but a lot of times in this third section, even if you change it, it really doesn't affect the amino acid. A lot of times it could be any one of the four in this last column and you still get the same result. So this would be called a silent mutation because that protein's working just fine, okay? Working A-OK -okay because it has the same amino acid, okay? Next, we have, it's supposed to be a TTC, but now it's an ATC. We have made a stop codon. Okay, but that protein isn't supposed to end there, so that's not good. So that's gonna make that protein not work, okay? Sometimes we have a mistake that is, isn't so bad, okay? So purple is talking about how they're gonna bond, uh, what pH they are, things like that. So water loving, non-water loving. So even though this is supposed to be a T, we end up with a G and we end up with a different amino acid. It's similar enough in structure and, and properties that that protein might work. 
okay? But here, here's one, it gives us an entirely different amino acid and that protein is not gonna work, okay? So what I want you to do on these next two um, point mutation slides is to go ahead and fill these in. So this is supposed to be a CCT, but now we have a CGT. So pair that up with some RNA and decide what amino acid you get, okay? See if it makes a difference. Okay, you can also actually have an extra base pair somewhere in there. Okay, so this was supposed to be CCT, while well, this G got inserted in there. And remember that DNA is read in pairs of, or in groups of three called codons. And so you can just imagine that everything down the line from here is going to be in the wrong set of three. Okay, so see what happens to that protein. And then there's sometimes a deletion. This is supposed to be a CAT. Well, this A got, got mixed, pulled out, okay? So again, we're reading in codons and what's gonna happen down the line, okay? So that's one type of mutation where we're talking about just a single base pair and the effects that it can have. Okay, we also do have chromosomal mis uh, mutations, okay? So here, this chromosome, chromosome is supposed to be A, B, C, D, E, F. Well, B got deleted, a whole chunk of chromosome, okay? Now, when we're in point mutations, we're talking about a single protein, okay? And whether or not that protein's being used at the time, is who knows what chances are, it's gonna be pretty pretty low, okay? But when we're talking about chromosomes, that's thousands and thousands of genes. So imagine, so if this person had an, a third of that chromosome gone, they're probably missing 400 genes and 400 proteins. Okay, that is not, 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 not good. Okay, vice versa, if it gets duplicated, then you have those proteins being expressed even more, and that's not good either. Now, this is called an inversion, and you can see it has all the same letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, and that might be okay. It just depends on, well, did they break up in the middle of a gene or not? Okay, so this one's a maybe. A couple chromosomes getting together called translocation. Look, it's supposed to be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, and they've swapped some genetic information. Again, this is just depending on where the swap was. Did it interrupt any genes? Okay. So these mutations that we're talking here, they are huge in regards to the number of genes that are involved that make up an organism, okay? Most chromosomal mutations do end in miscarriage. I want to say that there is one in four babies that miscarry, one in four pregnancies. Sometimes the mom doesn't even know she's pregnant before the baby miscarries, okay? So when we're talking about chromosomal mutations, those are huge, huge changes, and most of them do end up in miscarriage. Now, with that being said, there are several mutations that are survivable, okay? So a person with Turner syndrome only has one X. So two Xs is a female, and an X and a Y would be a male. So this female only has one X, okay? Now, we have never looked at a karyotype. This is a karyotype. These are all the chromosomes. And these dark bands on the chromosomes are the genes where they're encoding for proteins. Okay? So there are several um, mutations that you can look. This one has an extra 13 chromosome called trisomy 13. Here's a trisomy 16. 
a trisomy 18, trisomy 21. Here's a 15 deletion, a 7 deletion. Okay. And this one has a no number 1 and no number 19. Okay. So if you want to look up and see, uh, Turner syndrome is survivable. Uh, I'm not sure about trisomy 13 or 16 or 18. Those are pretty rare. Um, but a lot of these are, these are, some are survivable. Trisomy 21 is Down syndrome, which is totally survivable. Okay. So if you have any questions, go ahead and email me or send me, tell me, ask me somehow. But these are how mutations work. And I want you to go ahead and figure out on slides four and five how bad these point mutations would be if you think it, the protein would still work or not. Okay, my friends, have a good day. Be good people and make good choices.